I've got another chair to look at today and I've got a feeling it's going to be of interest to all of the office chair fans that are watching. This that I'm sitting on is the E3 ergonomic chair from Habada. This is about as far away from a gaming chair as you can get. So this is my full review. Let's have a look at it and I'll tell you if I think it's any good. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So this is the E3 ergonomic office chair. Let's just call it the E3 from now on for simplicity. It's got adjustability in just about every department and looks like something straight out of the cockpit of the Death Star. Picking up one of these chairs will cost you anywhere between 450 to 900 pound, depending on whether you want a footrest and if there are any sales on the Habada website. The model I'm looking at today includes a footrest and it usually costs £899.99p, 900 quid, but it's currently on sale for £549.99p. All chairs from Habada come with a three year warranty on all parts, with the brand offering replacement parts instead of repairing stuff, and you can return anything within 30 days from ordering with no questions asked at all. So the E3 then comes in two colours, black and white. Habada sent me out the white model to check out for the video. Both colour options are available with or without an underseat footrest, and if you opt to have one, you can expect to pay an additional £100. The chair, as I mentioned, looks quite futuristic on first impressions. The headrest, backrest, lumbar support and seat base are all padded with grey mesh, which has a diamond weave pattern when you check it out up close. The mesh is a mixture of nylon and yarn, according to the Habada website, alongside being 16.5% breathable and fully covered to realise superior comfort and durable support, whatever that means. Much like the other mesh office chairs I've looked at on the channel in the past, the main supporting structure of the E3 is a frame that runs up the back. This time around it's finished in a combination of glossy and matte grey paint which complements the mesh colour really well. The whole of the backrest section of the chair is made of three main panels. You can break it down into three main sections and they all attach to the frame that I just mentioned. Starting up top, the headrest is curvy and it's shaped really nicely. It's quite wide compared to headrests that I've looked at before, which allows you to find a position that's quite comfortable. I'll touch more on the comfort a little bit later in the video. Below that is the main backrest section, again finished in a combination of grey mesh and plastic frame. It's tapered towards the bottom edge to allow the lumbar support, which sits just below it, to fully adjust. The central section of that lumbar support follows the same design sort of pattern as the previous sections with the mesh coat in the middle section but flanking it on either side are two wings which are finished in a soft touch grey rubbery material that feels really nice when you touch it. The 6D armrest padding is a darker grey than the rest of the chair bringing a bit of contrast to the design overall. The armrest is split into two sections to allow the front to incline by up to 40 degrees. There's touches of chrome on the height adjustment handles, armrest supports and down on the five spoke base. I think it would have looked a bit better personally if these were also grey. I'm probably nitpicking a bit there, but I think grey would have looked a bit cleaner and a little bit more professional, I reckon. The seat base is fairly simple design-wise. Again, it's padded with the grey weaved mesh. It's 20 and a half inches wide, so it's, it's not the widest seat base I've seen, but it's plenty big enough for me. There's a slope along the front edge, which helps with comfort across the backs of the legs. The mesh is the only thing supporting your legs too, which is a good thing, as some chairs have a more rigid cushion, which I find can dig into your, like your hamstring and become uncomfortable after a while. Attached to the bottom of the seat base on this model is the extendable footrest, much like the one found on the Autofull M6 that I reviewed on the channel a while ago. It's basically a cushioned section attached to a metal rail, which can be pulled out and unfolded to provide some support for your legs if you want to sit back and relax. The finish on the sections that make contact with the backs of your legs is the same soft touch grey material that's found on the wings of the lumbar support. The support section of that footrest is split into a dedicated pad for each of your legs, unlike the single cushion supports that I've seen in the past. Overall, it's a good looking chair. 
if you're after the futuristic spaceship sort of look, it'll likely appeal to some, but then not to others, which is perfectly fine. Variety is the spice of life, as they say. One little issue I do have, though, is the colour. The website describes this chair as white. It's quite clearly grey, though, and not white, even to my colourblind eyes. But with that aside, that little niggle about the colour, I quite like how the E3 looks. It looks very, very grown up, for lack of a better term. Actually sitting on the thing is what really makes or breaks the deal with a chair though. And I'm happy to report that the E3 is easily the best ergonomic chair that I've looked at to date. And no, before you type a comment, I haven't had a chance to look at anything by Herman Miller yet. The E3 has almost a complete package in terms of adjustability. The headrest is very nice. It's wider than most and can be positioned well thanks to the wide array of tinkering that it can accommodate. It'll go up and down by 1.8 inches, in and out by 2.2 inches, and it's got a 70 degree dual axis angle adjustment. It clicks into one of five locked positions when moving forwards and backwards, and it's got a similar adjustment system when changing the tilt and the height, although on those axes it doesn't lock, but it just clicks into position and can be freely moved from one position to the other. It's easily the most adjustable headrest I've ever seen on a chair, and it works very, very well. It's easy to get comfortable, and it reaches far enough forward to support your neck and your head when you're sitting up straight in the chair. The backrest is height adjustable and it works with the same click lock mechanism as the headrest, although this time there are eight different steps or locking points to choose from. The bottom of the backrest can be adjusted between 27 to 32.5 inches from the floor. The lumbar support has multiple differing aspects of adjustability. The wing sections fold in to create a wraparound support that hugs your side when you sit in the chair. Alongside that, the whole of the lumbar support section can be raised and lowered in the same way as the backrest, clicking and locking into place in three different positions. I really like how these two heights are independent. It'll allow for people of all shapes and sizes to get good lower and upper back support. And then if that wasn't enough, the support also moves in and out in typical lumbar support fashion, again using that same click lock mechanism. I'm not a huge fan of the way the different pieces lock into place. If you adjust them too far, they reset and you have to start over again. But once you've got it set up for you, it won't be so much of an issue. So it's not nothing major, but I just, I just, I'm not a fan of that way of adjusting stuff. Of course, the chair has the usual height adjustment at the gas lift too, and it's got seat depth adjustability. I'm a huge fan of this. And any ergonomic chair that's worth its weight should have it as standard and the E3 has it and it makes a huge difference to getting properly comfortable and being well supported on your lower back and your legs. The armrests adjust in every way you'd want them to, up, down, in, out, side to side, they rotate and just like the rest on the Autoful M6, they have an incline on the front half which is really great for when you want to lift your forearms off of the edge of your desk. A great thing that sticks out to me about the armrests on the E3 is how high they go. You can see in this video while I'm sitting on it now, they have a range of between 27 and 32.5 inches from the floor. The E3 tilts back across a range of 140 degrees, but unfortunately this is just a, a kind of lock and unlock feature, access with the controls on the right hand side of the chair. There's no way to adjust the tension, which I think it needs. It would have been nice to see. You can lock the tilt back at five different levels, but without that tilt tension, it feels very, very sketchy when you fully recline for the first time. I haven't fallen off the chair, but it's felt like I was going to a fair few times. Then finally, we have the footrest, another extendable unseat footrest, just like the one found on the Autofault M6. I wasn't a fan of that one, and I'm not a fan of this one either. While this one is slightly better, it's still rather short and acts more like a calf rest. Before I move on to talk about how it's been for me using this chair recently, here's the full specs, showing that the gas lift can support up to 300 pounds or 136 kilograms, and then another graphic showing the full range of measurements and adjustability. This is easily the most adjustable chair I've ever looked at for Kit Guru. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro Gaming Chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, 
then I recommend definitely checking out boolies.co.uk. Actually using the E3 has been a great experience. It's by far and away is the most comfortable ergonomic office chair that I've tested in all honesty. As I mentioned, it's got adjustability by the bucket load, which a flip side to that is it can take some time to get everything set up correctly. It's a bit of a case of trial and error until you find the most comfortable way to sit and the most comfortable way to have this chair set up. I've sat for hours writing videos and playing games and not once have I had any fatigue, any pain or numbness in my legs or anything like that. It's handled my fairly bulky frame with ease to be fair and I've liked using it more than I thought I would. I'm used to sitting on a gaming chair most of the time and using something that has this amount of personalisation has been a nice change of pace and my back has thanked me for it. Putting it together was a fairly involved process when compared to some of the chairs I've reviewed previously. Having this many parts does lead to a longer build process with a bit more faff. The footrest has to be attached to the bottom of the seat base and the armrest and five spoke base both come in multiple pieces, leading to a few more steps to go through before you're actually sitting down. I managed it on my own though, so it should be doable for most people, but a second pair of hands wouldn't go amiss, especially when attaching the backrest to the seat base, as it can be a bit fiddly. Before I wrap up the video then, let's talk about build quality. It's all well and good if something looks good and is comfortable, but it's got to last as well, especially if it costs 900 quid like this does when at full price. Now, I'm beginning to see a pattern emerge when I look at chairs like this. It looks good, it's comfortable on first impressions and over the short period that I get to take a look at it, but the build quality, or maybe certain aspects of the build quality let it down and that pattern continues with the E3. There are good points. The mesh padding is great. It's firm enough to provide support, but has just enough flex to be comfortable. And that, that mesh is well made. It feels good quality and it feels like the mesh will last a long time. The gas lift also feels solid and sturdy and has held my weight really well. It's never creaked or lost pressure or anything like that. And then the casters and the five spoke metal base both feel good when rolling around and moving in the chair. It works well on hard floor and then it stays in place when you want it to as well. But in contrast to that, it suffers from the same shortcomings as other plastic framed ergonomic chairs that I've looked at. It wobbles an unacceptable amount. The armrests wobble, the headrest wobbles, the footrest wobbles and the backrest wobbles. Maybe I could forgive this a bit if the chair was priced at a few hundred quid and even then it'd be a bit of a stretch. But this chair costs 550 quid when on sale and 900 quid when full priced and for those sort of prices this just isn't good enough the headrest is a particularly disappointing piece of the chair build quality wise while it works well and supports your head and neck pretty good adjusting it feels awful and genuinely like it's going to break sometimes and don't get me started on the footrest it's dreadful it's too short it wobbles and it doesn't stay in place under the chair very well at all there's been multiple times where i've stood up and left my desk pushing the chair under it to later come back to the desk and find the footrest sticking out so in conclusion then the e3 has all the right ideas and all the adjustability in the right places it's a good chair to sit on and you can feel that it's better for your back than most gaming chairs but and this is a big but the build quality lets it down big time and is in no way reflective of the price. I hope Habada take my criticism constructively as I really wanted to like this chair and I did to begin with but the shortcomings became apparent after sitting on it for a few weeks and I really hope they fix that in future revisions and just just make the quality control a bit better and make the chair feel a bit more solid and less wobbly. Until then though, unfortunately I can't recommend it at full price and I'd struggle to recommend it even when it's on sale. And that's the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to Kit Guru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And if you go down below this video, you'll find links to our merch store like this hoodie and t-shirts and stuff like that. And then in the video's description, you'll find more links to our Discord server, our Patreon page if you want to check that out, and our website where there'll be a full written review of this. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. This has been the E3 Ergonomic Office Chair from Habada. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.